Welcome everybody to Facebook Live. You like my setup here? Well, it's Christmas time and I've been building this uh, manger scene the last couple of weeks. I started with the, let's see, the shepherds and then I went on to, I added the wise men and see the camels back here. And then here we go. This week we've completed it. We've got Jesus. We have Joseph and Mary, and we have come to adore the Lord. Isn't that cool? I got to tell you something, though, about the camels. These are, there were three camels, and these are, this is a precious set because my parents uh, got this in, um, uh, in Israel on a Holy Land trip just a long, long time ago. But after the program last week, I dropped one of these, I mean, on the carpet. I've got carpet in here. And um, it broke right in half. So I have a neighbor that does uh, woodwork, and I took it down uh, to him to get it fixed. So he's he's working on it. So um, hopefully next time we'll have the uh, the third camel here. So God is so good. Thank you so much for joining. We we are just thrilled to be here and to uh, just worship the Lord with you. We've got a couple. Uh, Christmas carols we're singing and just one standard worship song that's fitting right into our theme which is the keeping power of God over our lives and loved ones and I think this is really appropriate as our world is just getting so much more difficult to live in with all that's going on the evil and the corruption it's nice to know that God is keeping us and those that we are concerned about so we are in 1 John 5, 18 through 21. If you want to get your Bible ready, again, 1 John 5, 18 through 21, we are going to finish the book and uh, we, we'll just see what God has for us next time on what book study we're going to have. So feel free to comment and Kevin has already done that. I love that song, he says. And so we just invite you in, um, just relax. I hope you can you know, stop uh, doing some of the busy work and, and relax. You've been working hard. Uh, get ready for the week. Coming up here, spend some time in the Word with me. We're going to pray. Post any prayer requests. I know it's a busy time of year and all, but let's be like Jesus uh, or like Mary sitting at the Lord's feet. Remember that story and she listened to His Word. So uh, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for this program. We thank you for this time of year, Lord Jesus. It's very special and, and yet very busy too. And we just want to take that time to settle down and to come in, Lord, to your presence and to get that focus, Lord God. We know as we get into the word, it's like taking a bath, Lord. We know that we need that cleansing and we come out all squeaky clean just like after a bath and like after a Bible study. We feel good and ready to rock and roll for you, Lord. So we just thank you for that. Just guide us, Lord. Meet every need amongst us. And Lord, may it just be a time of uh, building up, Lord, of our faith. And bring us joy, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to do a couple uh, Christmas songs now. Let's start with Joy to the World. <laughs> Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And he heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy. Savior reigns. Let men 
Amen to that. What a great song. All right, Timothy Barber, my brother. Um, good to see you, Tim. Thanks for posting and praying for us. The Lord bless and keep you. Um, we're going to go on to another song. Let's tone it down a little bit to Silent Night. <laughs> to do a, a song um, called Give Us Clean Hands. Hey, Brother Bruce, and praise the Lord, and God bless you too, my brother. It was good to see you not too long ago, um, back in Texas, as we were going through on our trip. Brother Bruce and Brother Tim, uh, we all were praising the Lord for many years together, uh, when we were, we were there at Calvary Chapel, Norco. All right. But this song here is Give Us Clean Hands. is going on to the theme of uh, John. One of his scriptures here is, says, actually it's the last verse that finishes out his whole book. Hey, brothers, keep yourself from idols. So let's think about that as we sing this song. Maybe you can identify... Um, what you think some idols that a Christian can have in their hearts. And uh, maybe if you want to, you can even post some of your ideas on the comments there. What are some idols that a person can have in their heart? Okay, so give us clean hands. We bow our hearts. We bend our knees. Oh, Spirit, come make us humble. our eyes from evil things. Oh Lord, we cast down our idols. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift G 
generation that seeks, seeks your face, O God of Jacob, O God let us be, a generation that seeks, seeks your face, O God of Jacob. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees. Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things. Oh Lord, we cast down our idols. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. generation that seeks, seeks your face, O God of Jacob. O God, let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face, O God of Jacob. Lord, please keep us idols in our hearts, Lord. We're singing it, but we want to also obey your commands, Lord, to only have you as our one and only love in our hearts with no competition from anything else in this world, Lord. We just want to rededicate our lives to you, prepare our hearts for this Christmas season maintain our first love in Christ. We bow our hearts, we bend our knees, O oh Spirit, come make us humble. We turn our eyes from evil things, O oh Lord, we cast down our idols, give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another. Give us clean hands, give us pure hearts, let us not lift our souls to another. Oh God, let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face. Well, it's good to see an active comment community, and uh, we're seeing Elvia on there. Glory to our precious Lord. Amen, Sister Elvia. And uh, Sharon uh, is praying for her husband, Greg. She says, please pray for Greg. He will be going in for another stint. Hopefully it will not turn into an open heart surgery. Bless you and Cheryl. Thank you, Sharon, for that blessing. And we're going to be praying uh, shortly here. And let's we'll be lifting up our brother, Greg. Sorry to hear about, you know, the uh, situation there he's experiencing. Um, Jacqueline from Nicaragua. Um, she's just serving the Lord down there. And she says blessings. And Debbie Boyd, uh, she always has that howdy, Pastor Louie. So... Tipping my hat to you, Debbie. God bless you and yours. And um, so, yeah, just keep on um, posting and and uh, commenting. Again, uh, we're going to be talking about idols. If you have any ideas of what some idols could be in our hearts that a Christian can face, it doesn't have to be what you struggle with, but just in general, go ahead and post that. What do you think uh, an idol is that a Christian can have in their hearts? 
All right, well, let's go to prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful season, and we're just in the glow, Lord, and we just are worshiping you, and we thank you for this time to pause and to be, uh, you know, um, just come aside a little bit and to worship you at this time. And Lord, we just uh, pray for our brother Greg Osborne uh, going in for another stint, Lord. That's, you know, not something that I'm sure he wants to do, but Lord, as Sharon says, hopefully it won't turn into an open heart surgery. We, we pray, Lord, that it will just keep uh, at that uh, current level, Father, where it's at, and it wouldn't have to go into the rest, Lord Jesus. So we just ask for that, Lord. We just pray for your your healing touch, Lord. May his heart not be troubled, as it says there in John 14:1. You believe in God, believe also in me. And we pray for such a peace over Greg, Lord. And uh, I just pray that you would give him confidence, help him to be as positive and optimistic as he can be, Lord. And, um, you know, knowing that this is just the way our bodies are and we're going to need surgeries and procedures, Lord, as we go along in life. And Lord, we just uh, want to thank you for the current day uh, medicine that gives us uh, in surgeries and all, and the medical care that we do have that gives us the quality of life, Lord, that we can have. So we just praise you for that. Help Sister Sharon as she encourages her man. She knows him, um, you know, better than anybody else, Lord. So just give her that joy. Just give her that wifely wisdom, Lord, uh, to be right there for, for Brother Greg as she has always been for him. And we thank you, Lord. Lord, we just want to pray for um, just all that's going on. I want to pray right now that you'd be with uh, our our uh, women's Christmas uh, dinner that's going on right now, and for through our church, and to ask Lord that your blessings upon um, those who are there and those who are hearing the gospel, and Lord those who uh, are believers but just need that encouragement that these women would be filled. Uh, with uh, encouragement for the season and joy, Lord God, that this would be such a an uplift, Lord, uh, for the rest of the time as they go into um, the rest of the holiday and serve their their families and all. So, Father, we just pray for your anointing upon the word that goes forth, and we pray for all those things that will be coming up, Lord, uh, through our churches and our outreaches and our, our Christmas Eve services, and, and later on, um, New Year's Eve, and, and so forth, and just the living nativities that some churches are having. Father, we pray for the pastors as they uh, prepare their messages. And Lord, as we get together with our families, sometimes, uh, you know, it's an open opportunity for, for them to come to, to church, or maybe we'll be uh, at their, their place, and we can take them uh, to uh, uh, a local church there, whatever it might be, Lord, that we could just be witnesses for you. And as we go around and, you know, people say happy holidays and we can just say back, you know, Merry Christmas. God bless you. Jesus loves you. It's all about Jesus. He's the reason for the season or whatever you would have, Lord. We just pray for that wisdom to be able to, to give that uh, to the people and point the way to you. Lord, like these uh, wise men and shepherds that came, Lord, to worship you. And Lord, um, we just thank you for that and just pray, Lord God, that you would uh, be with all those whose hearts are broken, those who are lonely during this time of year, those who are alone, Lord God. I just pray that they would sense you and you would just wrap your loving arms around them. Help us, Lord, to be looking for people um, who... Um, do feel very isolated during this time or have had a very hard year that we would just be able to spend a little extra time with them uh, this time, Lord Jesus. And, and Lord, we know that we're just uh, hyper busy, but we just pray, Lord, for just those pockets and that inspiration from you to be able to hear your voice and to go uh, do what we need to do and uh, pick up that gift or whatever for that person and to go over here and do that. And, you know, as you speak to our hearts, Lord, just give us ideas of how we can touch people for you this holiday season. And we thank you, Father. Provide for all of our needs, 
Lord, we just pray for finances. We pray for all that, um, you know, uh, the energy uh, that is needed. And we pray for excitement, Lord. And uh, we just pray for that glow to be with us, Father, all during this time. And we thank you. And Lord, we just pray for our world. We pray for our country. Lord God, we just ask, Lord, that you would just bring revival in these last days. We pray for our churches, uh, Lord, to have revival. Be with our pastors and their families. Be with our missionaries on the mission field as they serve you, Lord. And so many will will just not be able to come home. And I pray you'd be with them, Lord, and, and encourage them that they're right where they need to be. And we thank you, Lord God, for that. We just pray for that last day's harvest, people to be saved, Lord. We pray that we'll be ready as we get ready for that new year, that you, we would just be uh, living in that excitement and anticipation for all that you want to do in us, Lord. And we just praise you and thank you. Lord, right now, we just pray that you would guide us as we study your word. And we're going to finish the book here of 1 John. And we pray for these, these last insights, Lord, that would just be able to uh, be a part of our understanding um, of you, Lord, and just how to love you and how to serve you. And Lord, just to feed us, just to feed your lambs tonight, Lord. We are hungry, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we're in 1 John 5, 18 through 21. And let me uh, grab my Bible here. First John 5, 18 through 21 says, We know that whatever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in the sway or in the power of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, and in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Well, that is a great section of Scripture, isn't it? So let's just get right into um, our theme, the keeping power of God over our lives and loved ones. As I said at the beginning, you know, the world's getting to be a more just wicked and dark place. Uh, Isaiah um, 60 talks about how deep darkness will be over the people. Deep darkness. So we're seeing that, you know, darkness and darkness. But we are the light, amen? And we just pray that we can become brighter and brighter as the light in contrast to what's going on in the world. And so that's what we want. You know, it's really cool how um, I like lighting. And, um, you know, I think it's really cool seeing all the Christmas lights or even in people's homes or, you know, as you drive by and see people's homes, you know, lit up. Lighting is a real cool thing and it pierces the darkness. And so we need encouragement that the Lord is going to keep us during this dark hour of mankind. And so it says here at first that we know that whatever is born of God does not sin. Well, I want to encourage you that it means uh, does not keep on sinning. It's in the present tense. Or we could say does not habitually sin. So if you're uh, a note taker or you have uh, a Bible you can, you know, make notes with, then you can kind of insert that. Uh, it says, does not, I would put habitually sin. Now we know all have sinned and fall short of the, of the glory of God. And, you know, we're all have those records, so to speak. Um, but, you know, uh, the thing is, until we get to heaven, it's just the way it's going to be. But we don't want to habitually sin. We don't want to intend to sin or make provision for the flesh or make plans to go out and sin. That part of us is over. 
we're done with that, aren't we? We're new creatures in Christ. We've been born again. And old things have passed away and all things have become new. So we don't want to be caught up in some sin. Uh, we know we all struggle with certain habitual, or I should say besetting sins, like it says in Hebrews uh, 12. You know, 12, 1 and 2 there. So, uh, but we want to learn to, um, you know, turn away from that and just turn to Jesus instead. He'll give us the strength to overcome the worst of our habits and temptations because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And so the Lord inside of you is stronger than the temptations that sometimes rage within us as well. So uh, praise the Lord. Jesus died and rose again to give us that victory. And uh, Satan wants to bully us and lie to us and say we'll never be free uh, from that particular sin or, or propensity or, or whatever it might be, but it's not true. So John has used this before in the first chapter. He has talked about, you know, sinning habitually and so forth. So, um, you know, uh, here he says it again. So we're very thankful for the keeping power of the Lord in our lives. He is stronger than all the temptations that rage within us. We can overcome anything, brothers and sisters, uh, through the power of Jesus Christ. And to have a, a change in our lives, a change of uh, temperament, a, a change of, uh, of behavior, and so forth. And, um, you know, that's the way it is with the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So the Lord help us all, especially those of us who are struggling. And so, but he who has been born of God keeps himself. And so, you know, this is the theme. God keeps us, but we also need to uh, keep ourselves. <laughs> That's really important. I'm going to explain that. And it says the wicked one does not touch him. So God keeps us as we cooperate by keeping ourselves in the arena of God's blessings and protection. So uh, what do I mean by that? Well, you know, you know me, I'm a football fan. And uh, my Rams won Thursday night. I was watching a little bit of football this afternoon. But, you know, there's those people, those officials there. They wear the zebra shirts. And, um, you know, they'll blow their whistle. They'll throw the yellow flag if there's an, an infraction. Um, it, maybe you've been watching the World Cup and you've seen that as well. Any, you know, organized sports are going to have those officials. And... Um, we know that you people have to play according to the rules. So in the Christian life, we have to keep ourselves in the arena. Can you picture that? The arena of God's blessings. You picture an arena. But if we, you know, violate God's word, if we go outside the boundaries, then we know that we won't be under the beautiful protection of God. You know, because we've wandered away. We're going to get, you know, uh, we're going to sow bad seeds and they're going to reap. You know, we're going to reap those things. And there's repercussions for our sins. The wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is, is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we thank the Lord for his forgiveness and his grace. If we've gone off to the sidelines, it's time to get back in to the arena. And that's the safety. We want to be safe. Uh, we want to stay within that uh, place where God can bless us. Amen. We don't want to be anywhere as a believer or do anything that is in violation of God's will. We want God's full blessings. We don't want to have to be to grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, we don't want to have to uh, uh, have to be convicted by our sins or by the Holy Spirit. Or to be under the discipline of God, you know. But if we don't listen, then of course God is will discipline us. He's so loving. And we'll learn our lesson. That's what life is all about, right? Um, someone asked me the other day, where did you go to college? 
where'd you go to school? And I said, I went to the school of hard knocks. <laughs> you know, Yeah, I went to school and I studied and all. But you know what? The best way to, to learn life is by the school of hard knocks. Amen. The experiences you go through, walking with Jesus every day. We stumble, we fall, uh, we learn what to do and we learn what not to do also by experience as well so we won't go back may god help us but you know um there's that balance there we need to keep within that arena but we know that god also keeps us so let's talk first about god keeping us and let's go to the book of jude that's right before revelation it's a tiny little one chapter book and I'm looking for it. And Jude one twenty four says, Now to him who was able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Wow, that is so cool. So God is able to keep us from stumbling. Man, there's some times I know where we just feel like, Lord, if you don't keep me, you know, I, I'm... I'm going to be caught by some, you know, wicked device out there, you know, between the world, the flesh and the devil, you know, I am susceptible. Be like uh putting my foot in a bear trap. Lord, you got to keep me and 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 keep me from those um those pitfalls. Lord Jesus. And I need you, Lord. Keep me from the world. Keep me from the flesh. Keep me from the devil. Lord, protect me as I go. And protect my loved ones as they go too, because we uh, are we stand strong, and we want to be pillars of the faith in our families and uh, amongst our our groups and all. Uh, you know, we just want to stand for the Lord, and um, we want to um, be there for others who are struggling. But so God keeps us. But we are also to keep ourselves. Look at verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. And so keep yourselves in the love of God. And it says it twice there. You know, first of all, verse 24, God keeps us from stumbling. Thank you, Lord. But verse 21, I need to keep myself in the love of God. You know, there is a part I must work out, you know, by being involved in that, that, uh, that game according to the rules so that I won't be called out for it, so that I won't be disqualified from the game and, game and have to go to the locker room. You know, I just want to be there and just have the, the blessing of the Lord. There's going to be struggles. I'm going to be tackled, you know. I'm going to fumble the ball, you know. But overall, you know, God has called me to be an overcomer. Remember that Bible study a few weeks ago? Are you overcome or are you an overcomer? And so we want to get back up. It's okay if we fall, you know, but we also go on in the Christian life, you know, and we don't let all of our mistakes and, and all, you know, hold us back. You know, we're, we're forgiven. Um, you know, Babe Ruth had such a great home run record as we know, but he had a huge strikeout record. Did you know that? You've probably heard that before. But what is he known for? When you see Babe Ruth, man, they even named a candy bar after him. You know, and he's just down in history as a as a giant um, of a baseball player. Just one of the all-time greats. But uh, he had, you know, a record. But, hey, we all do. But the Lord covers us by his grace. I love that. You know, in the book of Hebrews, it mentions all those of the faith, but it doesn't mention their past sins, you know, um, that are recorded in the Old Testament. So there's this beautiful covering of grace uh, with God's people in Hebrews chapter 11, the faith hall of, <clears throat> excuse me, hall of fame, because that's, that's the grace of Jesus, you know, and that's how uh, the Lord sees us. He's got us covered through his blood and we are forgiven through his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness and through the cleansing of his blood. Amen. 
and he keeps us in this world that we live in. Let's go to Psalm 121 for one final one on the keeping uh, power of the Lord. And hold on just a sec. I need to get another Bible. I'm grabbing Bibles here because that was just uh, a New Testament. Um, I think I left my other one in the in the car after church today. I don't think I brought it in. So Psalm 121. This is a really cool psalm. It, it talks about the keeping power of God. I will lift my eyes into the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So that's the one uh, Cheryl and I claimed when we went out on our two-month RV outreach trip uh, back east and all. We went down south visiting domestic missionaries and pastors and, and uh, you know, just Christian brothers and sisters that we have, have known over the years. It was such a great trip. Thank you for praying for us. God kept us, and uh, we need the keeping power of the Lord. Yeah, we might get a flat tire or something might, you know, happen to your, um, you know, your washer starts leaking and, and giving out and things like that. That's just regular stuff, isn't it, of, of life. But the Lord keeps us and he provides for us. He gives us the energy. He gives us the resources. He gives us all that we need to keep going in life. He protects us from uh, accidents. He protects us from all uh, kinds of things where we go, you know, boy, I should have been in that accident or I should have uh, slipped and, and fell, but for some reason I, I didn't fall or there's happened to be a little uh, a chair there and I put my hand out and, and, you know, that kind of thing. So the Lord does keep us and he keeps us as we go out and we work and our, as our kids go to school. And I used to pray this over my kids you know, I would drop them off in, in the morning. That was my uh, my role. Cheryl would pick them up after school. Uh, but my job, you know, I'm the early bird kind of guy. I would take the kids to school every morning, every school day. And, um, you know, I would just feel like, oh, man, Lord, please keep my kids at school. There's so much evil there. And uh, that stuff that could happen and all, I just pray, Lord, for protection over them. And, uh, you know, we would just see the Lord uh, do that. And But, you know, you have your, your loved ones on your heart all the time. You're always looking in to them. You want your heart assured that they're okay, you know. And so we're in this constant state of, uh, of consciousness in regards to our loved ones. Of course, that's who, who we love the most in this world, in this life. And uh, we want them to be blessed and saved and safe. And we want God to keep them. And uh, we know that this is it's really good so that we, we won't be overly concerned um, about our loved ones and start to worry and to have depression problems and anxiety. And, uh, you know, we are to um, uh, pray. Keep that concern uh, for their concerns, but to keep praying so that we won't uh, try to you know, be in, in control of their lives. Only the Lord is in control. Amen. And we can just pray them to the Lord. And God always comes through uh, with our own struggles and with the struggles of our loved ones because he keeps us. Praise the Lord. He's going to keep us the rest of this year. He's going to keep us as we go into that new year. He's kept you all this past year. And it wasn't too long ago we had Thanksgiving and we were giving thanks and looking back. It's a good time, brothers and sisters, at the end of a year to look back and to thank the Lord and, and review things, you know, like all that, that happened. 
Uh, we're in that season for that. Um, and just say, thank you, Jesus, for keeping me and those that I care about. And so it also says here, back in um, 1 John, <clears throat> let me go back to verse uh, 18 here. It says, the wicked one does not touch him. Well, we know that like Job, uh, he did touch Job. But what this means, it means to lay hold of or to grasp rather than a mere superficial touch. And so the wicked one can touch us only by God's allowance, but he can't, you know, grab us and pull us down uh, permanently and bring his evil destruction upon our lives. The Lord protects us. And remember how God protected Job. He can only go so far, like a dog on a leash, you know, and then the Lord pulls him back. And so um, this word is also uh, used when Mary Magdalene grabbed Jesus after his resurrection. And he said, don't touch me or don't keep on grabbing me. It's the same New Testament word. It means to lay hold of or to, to hold fast um, so as to hurt him. No, Satan cannot do that. We're protected, brothers and sisters. No matter what evil we see out there and how we can be scared about the news reports and, and um, inflation and Russia and the war and, and so forth and so on and nuclear weapons and, and uh, you know, whatever else is going on. The rumblings at, at work, you know, that, that our job might be cut or, or whatever it might be. Uh, the enemy can't, can't touch us. We're so protected by the Lord as we go through our medical procedures, as we just prayed for, um, you know, Brother Greg Osborne here, his wife Sharon is asking for prayer. So, you know, God is good. Let's go on to verse uh, 19. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. <laughs> and that is true. What does that mean? Um, it means lies in the lap as the as a child to a parent. Can you picture that? You know, Satan just uh, has the world um, in his lap and he's just like grabbing them and caressing their hair, you know, with his evil, ugly fingers and, and all. And the world just doesn't even know it, that they're under the, this sway of the wicked one. There's a, there's a, an evil force of sin out there. When you're not born again, you don't know anything about that. You know, you don't have the spiritual wisdom to to know that that's going on. You know, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. We see the, the, the TV media and we see the wars and, and the violence and and the drugs and and, uh, you know, the the music that that comes out and the movies that come out and and so forth and so on. The stuff that we we that comes across through the Internet and so forth. It's like, wow. You know, it's so true. The world lies under the sway of the wicked one. We had a recent um, uh, storm here today. It's all over now, but I just remember early this morning, you know, the sway of the trees and the wind was really blowing and the rain was kind of, you know, starting to come sideways. And so there's that influence, of course, in the world. John Wesley says, it's the horrible state of the world that is painted in the most lively colors, a comment on which we have in the actions, conversations, contracts, quarrels, and friendships of the worldly people. And it's true. All the stuff that goes out there and how the interactions are and, and, and so forth. Um, it's, you know, so evil. And Paul, you know, had this problem. And, and of course, um, uh, you know, the all the New Testament writers, it was such a wicked time. You know, John was a pastor in Ephesus, and um, so he's talking about, um, you know, he's the things in, in his world. There is a terrible picture of the Greco-Roman world of the first century AD, which is confirmed by Paul, as he writes in Romans chapters 1 and 2, and describes the wickedness of his day, and by ancient... Um, 
historians and writers such as Horace, Seneca, Juvenal, and Tacitus. So that's, uh, that's the way it is. The world's under the sway of the wicked one. We're under the sway of Jesus. Amen? We're in his lap, you know. And, and we're just, it says that we're in the, the hands of God and no one can pluck us out of his hands. Amen? Nobody. Our Father is greater than all, Jesus said, and no man can pluck you from my Father's hands. Woohoo! I'm going to clap on that one. I'm, I'm feeling that one. And verse 20, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. And so we have that understanding. We have that that discernment. We're, again, we're born again. We know the Word of God. We know Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. It's not what the world says, you know, or like, you know, people out there in the world say, your truth is what you believe. And that's, that's not true uh, because there's only one truth, and that's the Word of God and Jesus Christ. Amen? Uh, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through Jesus, the Son. There's only one way. There's not many ways to God. There's only one way, and it's Jesus Christ. Amen? And so, we're so grateful that we have, um, we know the true God, and we have eternal life. And I've been thinking lately, and I know you think these thoughts too, how grateful we are to be Christians. Why me? Why not, you know, somebody else? You know, why, why aren't I still lost? You know, um, why do I know the Lord? Why did he choose me? And, and I see other people just so lost out there. And it's like, Lord, and I'm just so grateful in my heart um, to be in his kingdom, in his family. And all that he's done for me. I know you feel that same way. And then to have eternal life that when we die... We're going to be with the Lord. Oh, and it makes all the difference having that hope and that knowledge, you know, so that when things happen to us or our bodies or what struggles that we go through, this world is not it, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. It really lightens the load. It really, really does. It's going to be over soon. You know, we um, are getting older and we know it. never know when when we're going to be with the Lord. And uh, we all have that, that appointment. And the Bible also says that Jesus Christ is coming soon. So it could be over before we know it. You know, we might not even face um, the, this, this year's Christmas uh, because the Lord is coming. And that was, that's his promise. And we don't know when. We just have to be ready. And then our final verse, 21. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Idols. Now, John, again, is writing from the context of this big Roman city in Ephesus. <clears throat> you know what that is today? It's uh, modern southwest Turkey. And um, there's not much there, just ancient ruins. I've had the privilege of going there one time. And, and you know, when you visit these places, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you could see the remnants of idolatry and the things that they used to worship still there through statues or through the uh, uh, pantheon or temples that they have built um, that still remain after all these years, you know, a couple thousand years and they're still there. Um, Ephesus was famous for its idols, uh, to be the temple keeper of the great Artemis or Diana was its pride. It was famous, however, uh, moreover, for its charms and incantations. Um, and folly of this kind has found its way into the Christian church. Read Acts 19 and how they were uh, into uh, magic and, and they had the books. Remember, they, they burned their books when they came to Christ. And, uh, you know, because they, they just knew that was evil. Like a lot of us did when we came to the Lord. We had stuff, you know, in our lives, in our closets, in our drawers, out in the garage, hidden or whatever. 
that we just said this is uh you know our old record you know some of our record collection and things like that and it's like no you know we know those things aren't aren't of the lord and so we got to get rid of of that and so those in ephesus they burned their books and so that's a good thing to do sometimes because we don't want to have idols in our lives we don't want to go back to the idols in our lives um here's a couple of scriptures about um idols in our lives uh, deuteronomy 5 7 you shall have no other gods before me so that's the first commandment usually when something is laid down uh you know in a contract or whatever um some kind of writing or document it's of the utmost importance so the first commandment of the ten you shall have no other gods before me again that's deuteronomy 5 7 all right and uh, back then uh, there was just all these gods from all the different nations and so forth. And, and God put Israel right in the middle of them. So um, there would be that influence uh, they would have to keep away from constantly. And so uh, there was the Baal worship and Molech and, and so forth. And uh, so God says, no, um, I'm only, there's only one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, your mind, and your strength. That's what God told Israel. We don't want to two-time the Lord. I think there's an old 50s song about being a two-timer. You know, no one respects that. We're supposed to be true to our lover, right? And so, um, you shall have no other gods before me. The Lord only in our hearts. 1 Corinthians 10, 14 says, Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. So we're to flee from it. You know, if something is uh, um, tempting you, we're to, to flee. If you see something on the internet, we just go, X that one out, you know, right? And um, if you're feeling vulnerable or, or whatever, you know, make sure you keep yourself from those temptations because they could just hit us at, at any moment when we're kind of uh, feeling a little bit, uh, you know, uh, down and, and blue. The enemy loves to just come in and, and capitalize upon that, you know. And we start maybe, you know, being involved in something that's not of the Lord because we're depressed and we're not feeling good and, and we want to just have a little pick-me-up. And we kind of do things, you know, uh, like, like a knee-jerk reaction kind of thing. We don't think through it because we are so depressed and we have so many needs and and personal and emotional needs um, that we really need to take all these things to Jesus instead of you know uh, getting involved in the things of the world to make us feel better or the recreational things that are that are not right or the entertainment things that are not right um, there's a positive way to relieve stress there's a negative way to relieve stress now uh, Let's go to Ezekiel 14, 1 through 8. And this will be the last scripture here. Ezekiel 14, 1 through 8. And then we're going to talk more about, you know, what, what can an idol be? And what kind of categories can they, they fit in? Uh, but for right now, Ezekiel 14, verses 1 through 8. Now, some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts and put before them that which causes them to stumble into iniquity. Should I let myself be inquired of all by them? At all by them? Therefore speak to them and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Every one of the house of Israel who sets up his idols in his heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity, and they, and then comes to the prophet, I the Lord will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his idols, that I may seize the house of Israel by their heart, because they are all estranged from me by their idols. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Repent, turn away from your idols, and turn your faces away from all your abominations. 
For any one of the house of Israel, or of the strangers who dwell in Israel, who separates himself from me and sets up his idols in his heart, and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity, then comes to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. I will set my face against that man and make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut, cut him off from the midst of my people. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. That's what God was saying here. You shall know that I am the Lord. So these people came to Ezekiel wanting to inquire of the Lord. And God says, no, they've got idols in their hearts. Why should they come to me? You know, uh, when they're, they have duplicity of heart, they're two timing me. You know, uh, why don't they seek out their, their idols? Why are they coming to me? You know, how it is sometimes when we're, we're in trouble. You know, we can go to the Lord and it's like the Lord saying, well, where, where have you been in the first place? Kind of thing. Why don't you go to the idols that you live for and that you worship? So, you know, what are some idols? You know, it just could be anything. Um, anything that replaces God in our hearts. Whatever we think about the most. Whatever our, our passion is. It can be a thing. It can be uh, a certain thought or way of life or philosophy. It can even be another person in our lives that we put before God. And there's only one God. And he only can fill the God-shaped hole in our heart. So... It can be anything. That's just why I think the last verse of 1 John, it just kind of leaves it open. My little children, keep yourself from idols. Whatever is that replacement. For me, let's just say, um, okay, it could be my, my, uh, my nice car. Um, it could be my, my music, you know, my guitar. And let's say um, um, I overdo it. You know, I'm playing all the time and I'm not helping Cheryl out around the house and I'm not reading my Bible and it's like, oh, I just want to stay home from church and play my guitar. Well, I'm just choosing an example. Um, and that could be an idol. All I think about for someone, it could be golf. Like, oh, I, I got to improve my score and, and, and I've got to just learn how to swing, do my swing better and, and, and so forth. It could be uh, anything. It could be money, living for uh, money, and th therefore we become greedy. And yet we still go to church, we might still even tithe and give to the Lord. But, you know, way down deep in our heart, we're living for status, perhaps. You know, it could be online all the time, looking for that new house. I got to get out of my neighborhood and I want to go upscale. I want to go uptown. Um, I, I want that for myself. I want a nicer home. A nicer environment, you know, um, that kind of thing. I'm tired of where I, I'm living, you know, and I want to have the car that, that goes with it and, and so forth. Oh, man, that can just be such an, an idol all we, we dream about. And, you know, especially if we don't pray about it, you know, we can pray about anything. We can pray about a move. We can pray about, you know, an, a car or a newer car or a newer used car or whatever. You know, it's okay to seek the Lord on that, but to not, you know, always think about it and, and live for it. An idol can also be um, someone, um, another person, and that we think about all the time. <clears throat> now, it's okay to think about, don't get me wrong, our, our loved ones, our friends, of course. We love them, and uh, we pray for them. We're supposed to think about them and always keep them in our hearts. But to the point where, like, we worship them. And, uh, you know, that's not good. Uh, we Sometimes we can even, you know, worship our, our kids and be uh, all driven by them, you know, and that's not good. Uh, we're to just be real careful to worship the Lord and to 
um, make sure that there's no one in our hearts. It could be a boyfriend or a girlfriend, you know, um, whatever it might be. It's like all we can think about or all we can worry about. Nope, nope. Idols. The Lord, number one. Jesus is number one in my life. And then everything else. Then I, I serve my, I love and serve my family and my friends and, and so forth. Oh, brothers and sisters, I know it's kind of uh, weird to think about it that way. That can even be another person, but it really can. There should be only one person in our hearts at all times that we just think about the most, that we love the most. You know, because everything else uh, can really disappoint us. Those idols can break, right? And, um, you know, they can be taken away from us. Uh, they can disappoint us, you know, where uh, you think of something typical like a, a fire that comes through. And now my guitar is all, you know, burned up. Oh, God forbid. But see, now I just, I just go with the Lord. And, um, you know, I just trust him. And if he wants me to, to play, then I know that he'll provide for me another guitar, you know, and, and whatever it might be. And that way, you don't get like overly concerned about something or worried or, or devastated by the things in your life. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. We learned that lesson from Job, you know. But if everything is taken away, we still have God, don't we? You know, nothing can take him away. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He satisfies us. If we worship people and they disappoint us, then we get all depressed and down. Well, you know what? We've got to learn to put Jesus as number one in our hearts. We know that people will let us down. Even those very close to us, we're going to get hurt. Sometimes there's uh, great hurt and, and, uh, and betrayal. And, uh, you know, then we can just tip and just kind of, you know, not have uh, the strength and the whole uh, fortification that we need to to live life and to be and to be healthy and strong it all goes back to the Lord everything else can come and can go but the Lord will never go he's that sure and strong foundation amen and he is God he's number one and sometimes these things are tested remember when Abraham was told to sacrifice Isaac that story always just makes me so emotional when I read it and Abraham had the knife in his hand and the Lord said no I was don't do it Abraham I was just testing you you know and and sometimes it's that way you know that we're, we're tested and it's like oh man you know what about my home and what about these things and my securities and things like that and God says am I your number one am I your everything you know and, and if you don't have anything, you have me. That's what the Lord would want to say. I'll never let you down. I'll never leave you. I will always undergird you. No one can pluck you out of my Father's hand. My Father is greater than all. He loves you. And he will keep you in this wicked world that we live in. Wow. Aren't these the wonderful words to end with as we finish out the book of 1 John? You know, next time, I think we'll just do some uh, topical studies, you know, with the holidays amongst us. And then we'll start fresh with a new book in the new year. So that's kind of my uh, trajectory. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight. Let's pray. Father, we just praise you and thank you so much for your word. We pray, Lord, that you would just, Lord, speak to our hearts through all that was spoken from your word tonight, that, Lord, you would keep us in this wicked world and our loved ones, and that, Lord, we would just be under your sway, your influence, not the influence of the world, that we would not love the world or the things that are in the world, but, Lord, to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And as you told Peter, Peter, do you love me? We want to say with Peter back to you, yes, Lord, I love you. We do love you, Jesus. Please keep us from idols, from any substitutes. 
Keep our hearts from straying. May you be the number one passion in our life, Lord, the number one person, what occupies us the most. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, just a few more of the comments, and we'll sing one more song. Francis Celestine, a missionary down in Belize, Central America, is saying, praise the Lord. Yes, Francis, praise the Lord is right. God bless you and Adina and your family. Uh, we, we are praying for you so much, brother. Um, just lifting you up in the Lord after all that you have suffered in your life recently through the loss of your son. And we just love you and pray that God will continue to bring that comfort and his sustaining grace upon, upon you all. And also Susan uh, says, Good evening, Pastor. I have a question I did not attend because I am coughing, but I have a question. When Jesus was on the cross with his mother and, and John, where is then that time Joseph? Is it not during times of struggles our parents are with us? Yeah, well, if you're speaking of, uh, you know, um, Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus, most uh, of the Bible scholars say that he probably passed away, Susan, and he wasn't there. And uh, we don't see him, you know, uh, after a certain time there in, in the Bible, after like Jesus was 12 and all, we never see Jesus again in the gospel pages. So he wasn't there when he was an adult. It was only Mary and his brothers and sisters. Um, so uh, he probably passed away and, um, you know, uh, we don't see him any, any time else. So... I hope that's helpful, Sister Susan. Also, why is his mother endorsed to John when she still have Joseph? Yeah, so she didn't have Joseph, and this is why Jesus said on the cross, one of his seven phrases is he was actually taking care of his mom from the cross uh, to, you know, John, um, take care of my mom is basically what he was saying. And John did take care of her, and there's good indication that he, he took her with her up to Ephesus, where he's writing here, First John. We just talked about Ephesus. And she probably died and was buried there in Ephesus. Um, so that's um, kind of what most Bible scholars believe. So thank you for that question. You know, pastors, they just love those kinds of things, the questions and, and answers. Well, let's sing one more song. Oh, come, let us adore him. 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 Christ the Lord, for he alone is worthy. For bless you and keep you. May the Lord just continue the work that he started in your life. May we just go out with joy and be led forth with peace. And may we just be that positive 
influence because we've been filled with the Spirit and the Word of God and the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ which makes all the difference in our hearts and in our attitudes, lifting our moods and making us bright and cheery uh, towards others and more persevering in our faith uh, because we know the Lord is with us and he's keeping us. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, and we all said, Amen. See you next time. Rise up.